Okay, so how did it all start? Well, first of all, at Cash is an open protocol for digital advertising. It's designed to eliminate the inefficiencies and complexities of the current ad supply chain. Um, as we know, digital advertising has grown into this complex, overly intermediated and inefficient marketplace that hurts everyone. It hurts publishers, advertisers and users. Publishers are losing revenue, advertisers are losing data and transparency, and we as users are constantly being tracked by hundreds of fat trackers, uh, slowing down the page loads, uh, consuming our mobile data battery, but most importantly, our privacy. Um, so at AtCash, we really want to want it to solve these problems, and that was our motivation. So AtCash is founded on two main pillars, two main convictions. First of all, we truly believe that the open internet, the free access to knowledge and information is crucial. It's probably one of mankind's greatest innovations. It's a, it's a powerful equalizer. Whether we like it or not, advertising is what has been feeding this um, global content knowledge distribution network. Um, so clearly we need a more sustainable business model for the open internet because we, we could see that as advertising has grown increasingly inefficient, more publishers are going out of business, more content is hidden behind paywalls. So that's clearly something that we had to work on, creating this sustainable business model for the open internet. Um, second, well, for this to work, we really need to bring transparency and accountability to the current ad supply chain. Um, we have been doing this in two ways, um, through legal action and technological innovation. Um, over the past year and a half, we have been in a hard legal battle against Google for failing to refund advertisers for invalid traffic, despite their claims of doing otherwise. Um, and I'd say that we recently had a um, you know, uh, a success. Uh, we can now happily say that Google will be refunding $75 million back to advertisers. Um, but despite this victory, the mark that we really want to leave on the space is not a legal one, but technological. So over the past four years, we have been working steadily, working to build a protocol which would make this transparency and accountability a default state for the digital advertising, not something that you'd have to um, sue for. And we realized early on that just applying a quick fix solution to an already broken infrastructure was not going to solve all of those issues that Adriana described. So we set our minds into completely re-engineering the core protocol on which real-time bidding advertising is happening. And that's what we've been doing in AdHash. And um, as we have uh, already proven, we're not afraid to um, tackle the big boys. So we are going to uh, launch this uh, product this summer and um, hopefully um, attract a um, large number of um, advertisers who care about data transparency and um, efficiency and publishers that put their users first and focus heavily on privacy and are tired of paying over 70% commission to the middleman on the ad supply chain. I've been an entrepreneur for nearly a decade now and uh, obviously as uh, any entrepreneur have experienced successes and uh, failures during that period. Um, as it's a cliche to say this, but failures actually tend to teach you a lot more than uh, successes uh, often do. Um, uh, we have, um, in this particular industry that we're working in now, uh, experienced uh, mostly the failure of trying to build a better system by integrating with all of the existing um, ecosystem players and uh, building tools on top of them. Uh, which led us to realize that it actually wasn't good enough. We were just becoming one of those middlemen and the, uh, because we are a profitable company and making money, make, making those revenues and growing our business actually pushed us away from our ideals and our goals and uh, more into just commoditizing us as one of all of those many um, ad tech players. So that's definitely something um, that we learned it, and it's much harder to stand your ground than you uh, expect it to be once you uh, first start. Um, but we made the big decision to completely refocus on building the technology and uh, focusing entirely on, um, on our long-term vision. And uh, in more general terms, I would say that um, 
as an entrepreneur, I have managed to uh, build products in a few industries that were very, very innovative and ended up uh, creating uh, relatively large uh, markets. However, uh, up until this point, I have uh, personally failed to uh, capture much of that growth and uh, market that we have actually created. Uh, so um, this time we are building um, something that's much more open and inclusive and uh, is built on the idea that other companies will be uh, growing their products on top of our protocol and we therefore hope to capture a lot more of that positive value that we create uh, into our company this time. Our goal at Adhash is over the next three to four years to capture over 1% of the global market share of digital advertising and uh, thus allow third parties to build on top of us capturing uh, even a tiny uh, percentage point in a huge global industry that's so riddled with problems would allow people to realize that reliable and computationally verifiable data far surpasses, surpasses uh, any approximate audience targeting that's existing at the moment and that first party data trumps third party data. As soon as we get there, it will set us for a much uh, easier growth trajectory from there on. The CV incubation problem creates a really conducive, really productive environment. Um, I mean, the sheer amount of exchange of ideas between peers, the knowledge, the information that you gain from experts, from mentors, from people dropping by to sit down and talk to you about your project is truly invaluable. Um, also, the pitch opportunities, the presentations, just being immersed in a space that is genuinely interested in the technology. Um, all of these elements really help you to get from zero to 60 um, really fast. And uh, we also um, discussed this already with some of the uh, CV uh, partners, but um, we were accepted into quite a few accelerator programs at the same time. Uh, for us, it was a bet uh, choosing uh, CV Labs over the others. Uh, it could have been a disaster or it could have been great because you were doing this for the first time. So, you know, we, we, we didn't exactly know what to expect, but we hoped uh, that since it's uh, the first program, uh, everybody involved in will really give their absolute best and will provide really give us much more value than um, the other programs would. And uh, after a few weeks, we're happy to say that's exactly what it turned out to be. I would actually even say that uh, in some respects, the program exceeded our expectations so far. Also, um, the batch size here is relatively small compared to other incubation or acceleration programs. And that makes it very personal. So you get a lot of attention from everyone involved in the incubation program. Um, you can literally grab anyone, sit down, have a talk. Um, so that's very that has been very helpful as well. And specifically about Zook as an ecosystem, <laughs> even for our industry, we found so many people uh, who could potentially be our clients that just come to us, reach out to us, uh, find us through meetups or through mutual connections and just start conversations with us. So essentially just in uh, one week of uh, doing business here, it's fair to say that we have managed to uh, speak to more potential clients than we would otherwise it would always take us months uh, to find that many. Uh, so that's, uh, that's also something that we did not expect at all when we came here. And that's something that we found out about uh, Zook as a, as a place, as an ecosystem that has really, really surprised us positively. No, <laughs> no, no, we haven't. Um, I, was, I was going to, but then I was thinking, oh, I don't have the uh, mat thing that, you know, the thing. I don't know whether I should bring it or not. And I was about to talk to Francesca about it. So hopefully next time. <laughs> And I'm into extreme sports. If I'm going to dedicate time away from work, it better be something adrenaline-filled otherwise. <laughs>